Hey guys, it's Pam, your favorite paralegal slash notary public from Brooks Notary and Litigation Support. Just wanted to do a quick video about some Q&A. Um, I've received a couple of questions through my DM and just thought I'd go ahead and answer them here on YouTube. Okay, so question number one is from a new paralegal. She actually just enrolled into paralegal school. Um, we had a couple of uh, discussions. She wanted to learn how to become a paralegal and all of that stuff. So, you know, she kind of picked my brain a little bit about um, how to choose the best school and all that good stuff. And so she ended up enrolling. So I'm actually kind of proud of that. <laughs> so, um, so she sent me a couple of questions. And the first question, number one, is, um, let's see, okay. Um, I know that we're not allowed to give legal advice, but when people ask questions, can you give your opinion? Well, the answer to that, unfortunately, is no, because that still can persuade someone to make a decision. Um, so we can't give our opinion. What we can do is the only, okay, the only time that we can remotely give any information about um, what someone should or shouldn't do is if we're working for an attorney and we are speaking directly through the attorney. So if the attorney comes to us and says, hey, I need you to contact such and such client. I need you to tell them to do X, Y, and Z. Then that's different because that's coming directly from the attorney. We can't deviate from what the attorney says. We can't put our own two cents in on it. All we can do is say, hey, Mr. Client, such and such attorney says that you should do X, Y, and Z. Okay, so question number two. This is from someone who is a, new, a newish realtor. So she's a new realtor and a new notary. And so her question is, what type of software or apps do you use to track your mobile appointments and transactions? Okay, so there's a couple of things that I use um, that I've, you know, kind of swear by <laughs> is um, for my transactions, I mostly use PayPal because um, they have a pretty good uh, system in terms of keeping track of your payments. Um, you can create invoices. People can uh, pay you directly online. Um, say you create your invoice. Um, you have to have a PayPal business account to do this, but you create an invoice and um, and you can download the invoice and email it to them, or you can simply download the link and send it to them and, th and they will be able to, um, you know, click on the link, open it, it'll show all the information from the invoice and then they can make payments, they can add a tip, they can do all that. You can also determine whether or not you want to allow them to make a partial payment or allow them to pay in full. Now, of course, just, you know, a little tidbit, business tidbit, um, don't give the option to make a partial payment unless that's something that you've discussed. Always select pay in full because <laughs> you want to get all of your money. <laughs> so if you give people the option, they will take the option. Most times they will take the option. Um, I always click the little allow customer to apply tip because, you know, a lot of times people are feeling generous, especially if you've done a great job, they will give you tip. I give you tips. Um, so I definitely recommend that. That's if you decide to go with PayPal. I also have a Square account as well. I'm still learning how to use Square, um, but it's great for appointment booking. Oh my God, it's amazing. So I'm really trying to learn how to incorporate that more through my website. Um, I have it available for appointments, um, mostly for notary appointments. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to work it for dealing with like consultations, you know, if someone needs to work on um, a paralegal project with them or for them. Um, but um, appointment wise, it's amazing because you can block out the spaces of time that you want to make yourself available 
and uh, and give and also can give a link to your customers. You can have it on your website. Um, they create a website link for you as well, so people can click on the link, see your availability for whatever service they're looking for, and they can go ahead and put it in there, put in their time, or select the time. You have the option to approve if that appointment works for you, or to decline the appointment, or suggest another time. You can also have the option to make a client, um, to make a requirement for the client to um, leave a deposit in order to book your time, and then you determine what that deposit is. So they have, you know, you can put the terms and conditions, all that good stuff. So it's, it's quite a bit because I'm so used to using PayPal. I'm still learning how to use the Square appointment setting and booking. Um, they also allow payment options as well. You can pay online through Square, through a link, through the app. If you have a Square account or a Cash App account, um, there's actually a business, you know, ca oh, technically Cash App account. I have one of those as well. Um, so that's what I use for my transactions. And the, I did cover a couple of these, just the Square and the Google in a previous video about five things they don't teach you in notary school. You know, just go on and, you know, click click that video um, <laughs> but uh, as far as appointment setting um, but uh, if it's something where people call you um, or email you or text you um, about setting an appointment with you um, I would always include it include that information into your calendar so that you can visually see what your day is going to be like or what your week is going to be like it just it helps me mentally to prepare for what it is that I have to do for the day or the week or whenever Okay, so question number three. Okay, this is from someone. Let's see. She says, um, Hello, I'm interested in becoming a mobile notary. Would you be able to give me some direction or guidance? I'm from Virginia. Okay, so um, I have never been commissioned in Virginia. However, um, the Secretary of State of your of your of your state <laughs> generally has information about how to become a notary um, and the requirements on to qualify to become a notary. So I recommend going to your state's Secretary of State website, um, and you can also go to Google and just tap how to become a notary in my state, you know, or whatever state that you reside in. Um, that's generally pretty helpful because sometimes um, it, the the websites, the, the state websites, sometimes they're a little hard to navigate because they have everything there. It's one central hub for everything related to the state. So sometimes they're a little hard to navigate. So you can also just Google it like literally just type in how do I become a notary in Virginia or whatever state and it'll pull up the exact link to the exact uh, page that you need to go to to gather the information um, you know and they're also you know and also look up Virginia notaries um, they can tell you what to do as well some of them I mean not everyone is you know open to talk because they look at it as if oh you're my competition it's like there's enough people for us to all be able to make money there's enough customers for us all to be able to make money so i have no problem if i know the answer i have no problem telling you or trying to help you get ahead um but you know so i would try you can ask a virginia notary you can go to um notaryrotary.com that's a website that is a notary directory and that, um, and and you can kind of go down the line and just ask and just see. Hopefully, someone is, is willing to help and willing to give you that information. You can select a notary in your state, uh, in your within your zip code, um, and just send them an email or send them a message to say, "Hey, you know what? I'm new to um, you know, I'm new to the idea of wanting to become a notary public. Just wanted to find out if you can kind of point me in the right direction." on what I should do. How do I become a notary? Hopefully, you know, you can find someone that's willing to help. Okay, so question number four is from a gentleman who is from Texas and he's trying to learn a little bit about the climate of uh, law firms out here, basically to find out um, 
you know, what firms are good or bad or, you know, the direction he should go with his uh, legal experience. And so, uh, you know, so there's several questions. So I'm just going to pick two in terms of what I personally do. Um, he says, which law do you assist with and what do you find is a need out there? So um, I just let him know personal injury uh, and family law are like the main um, practice areas out here. Um, get, personal injury is king <laughs> in the state of, uh, well, I will say in Las Vegas. I haven't been to the entire, through the entire state of Nevada, but in Las Vegas, personal injury is king. Um, there are advertisements all over the place. Everywhere you go, you're going to see a billboard for a um, personal injury attorney. So, but that's because we have a lot of car accidents out here. They have like state, I just recently learned about staged car accidents and I knew it, you know, happened from time to time, but apparently Vegas is like riddled with that stuff. So just FYI, if you're moving to Vegas, your auto insurance is going to be through the, you're going to be paying through the nose for auto insurance. Okay. Um, cause we have insurance fraud <laughs> out here. That's a big thing. They're causing accidents everywhere. So just be careful on the road guys. Um, but anyway, so um, personal injury is a big thing out here and also family law. Um, in terms of what I personally assist with, I haven't done personal injury um, independently. Um, I did work for a law firm for a short period of time and did a little bit of personal injury stuff. But um, uh, family law seems to be the main thing that's been my main client base um, uh, for Nevada. I've had a couple of uh, contracts, um, a couple of minor civil situations, you know what I mean? Um, but mostly, uh, there's it's family law. I mean, you know, so I, I recently really dug in and learned how to to do some of this stuff because I generally avoid family law like the plague. <laughs> so there was a great attorney that I worked with for a little while um, as he was uh, building up his his practice, and um, and so just the 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 he focused on family law. So, um, you know, I, if I could help it, I would avoid it. I don't like it. It's too much drama. I don't like how families are torn apart. I don't like how children are treated. I just, I hate it. I hate it. But, um, but I've actually gotten pretty good at it. <laughs> so, um, so since then, that's pretty much the, the bulk of work <laughs> that I've been taking on lately has been family law stuff. Um, but civil family law to answer question about what it is that I actually assist with. <laughs> All right. And so this is going to be our final question for this video. Um, this is number five, question number five. And this is from a gentleman who says, hello, I'm a fellow paralegal and notary as well. Uh, my question is, how did you manage to get clients? Okay. So um, one of the things that I did, it's very important to have a website. And you have to create social media platforms for your uh, business. So a lot of us have, you know, our personal profiles and post business stuff as well. And that can be a little confusing for a client. So I always recommend that you separate your business stuff from your, um, from your personal stuff. That's one thing. Um, and then, you know, you can gather follow followers by following certain hashtags, depending on which platform you're on, like Instagram. I use Instagram mostly um, for stuff. You know, I'm more active there than anywhere else. And um, so I follow certain hashtags. Um, that's how you get your following up. You follow other people who are in a profession similar to you, things like that. Um, you, you know, it's also good for networking. But in terms of getting clients, that's a way to attract clients because when you have a social media presence, they're going to look first if you're trying to get someone to, to get your business um, or to hire your business. I'm sorry. They're going to look to see if you have a website, if you have social media, if you have things like that, because they want to see if you're a credible business. So, um, so that's why I'm starting out with the social media and the website stuff. Um, but specifically... 
places that I went when I started. When I became a notary, I went to Notary 2 Pro, that's N O T A R Y, the number two, and pro.com to get uh, my loan signing training. And it's really, really good. It's very thorough. Pricing is very reasonable. Um, and they also do like the background checks for you and all that kind of stuff. They're, they're really good. Um, I would recommend them to anyone. Most people go to the NNA, but I don't, I don't use them particularly because they're such a huge company. I prefer to go with the little guys, you know? Um, so Notary to Pro is really good. Um, and they have a vendor list of, uh, loan signing companies, credible loan signing companies that pay you well and pay you on time and will take care of you if you take care of them. So they, so, but you have to, of course, sign up with Notary 2 Pro in order to get that information. And then there's, um, um, Notary Rotary, which I mentioned, you know, previously. Notary Rotary is another way. List your business there as, um, as a notary. And people can find you. You'll become part of their directory. There's a paid version and a free version of the website. So if you do the paid version, of course, you get priority listing. The free version is still, you know, great. I mean, I'm, I'm not paying for it, <laughs> you know, um, and I still get a good amount of notary business. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Uh, minor technical difficulties. <laughs> okay, well, I pretty much answered the question about notary leads. In terms of um, paralegal leads, it's mostly through Google. Um, you make sure that you have a listing on Google and use Bing. Bing is very good as well in terms of generating leads. Um, and they also give you reports of the people who has um, looked up your website. So you want to have keywords in your um, title or in your description that people can, um, can easily find doing a Google search or a Bing search. So I have both. Um, and a lot of times people are looking for legal service or something like that. Um, and so, you know, so that's for, of course, document preparation, um, which is different from paralegal services. So just want to make sure you guys know that there's a big difference. Um, cause you, cause we can't offer paralegal services to the public. We can offer document preparation services to the public. Um, paralegaling is when you're working for an attorney directly. So, um, so that, so there's the, the Bing, there is the Google, and then there's, um, there's little independent sites. You can use something like Upwork, um, which I don't use. It's like a ghost town because I don't like the way that you have to, uh, work to get your leads. I, I don't really care for that. And then, um, and they take such a large portion of your, um, fees. The last I checked, I haven't been there in a while, so I can't really tell you. But what made me leave was because they wanted to take like 40% of my earnings. <laughs> so I was like, oh no, I'm doing all the work. You just got to leave. No. So, um, and then the other one was uh, Thumbtack. And um, I actually stopped using them recently as well because they've gone up on their prices in terms of um, generating leads as well. But in the beginning, it was very reasonable. And, uh, and I really like their service. I use them a lot. I use them a lot. Um, but you definitely need a marketing budget so that you can um, be sure to attract new business. And surprisingly, YouTube. You can advertise on YouTube. You can advertise on Facebook. You can advertise um, on Google. You know, on Bing, you can advertise just about anywhere. And today, you know, people are mostly online. You know, people aren't as, you know, watching TV as much and things like that. Like everybody did. There's like, I think, I think the thing was a 90% in the USA um, have 90% of the population has a YouTube account. So um, it's very important to utilize that platform. As you know, as you see, I'm, I'm doing right now. I'm doing right now. <laughs> so that is it for our first Q and A. And so I thank you so so much for sticking around, and uh, I hope you're you stuck around to the end. <laughs> but I greatly appreciate your patience, and I really hope that some of the information that I shared was helpful to you, and will help you grow your business or to make a decision to become a notary or a paralegal or both. 
So please uh, like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. I'm going to put some information in the description um, to cover, you know, that covered what I talked about here in this video and a couple of links to the platforms that I um, brought up as well. Um, and until next time, I'll see you in the next video.